Meet Your Straw Man and Whatever You Want to Know by David E. Robertson. Let's have a little quiz. Number one, who meets there? Number two, what do they do there? Number three, do they help you in any way? If your answers were, number one, members of the government. Number two, they represent all the people living in the country. Number three, yes, they create laws to protect me and my family. Then let me congratulate you on getting every one of your answers wrong. Didn't do too well on that quiz? Okay, let's have another go. Number four, when was slavery abolished? Number five, was slavery legal? Number six, are you in debt to a financial institution? Here are the answers. Number one, the serving officers of a commercial corporation. Number two, they think up ways to take money and goods from you. Number three, no, absolutely not. They help themselves and not you. Number four, slavery has never been abolished and you yourself are considered to be a slave right now. Number five, yes, slavery is legal. Although it is not lawful, you need to discover the differences. Number six, no, you are not in debt to any financial institution. Does this seem a little strange to you? If it does, then read on. Those in power have a big secret. Paying taxes is optional. Re registering a vehicle is optional. Paying a fine is optional. Attending a court is optional. You can if you want to, but you don't have to. Surprised? Well, try this on, f try this on for size. Every mortgage and loan is fully repaid from day one. You can pay it again if you want to, but you don't have to. If no one has told that you have a straw man, then this could be a very interesting experience for you. Your straw man was created when you were very young, far too young to know anything about it. But then it was meant to be a secret as its purpose is to swindle you. And it has been used very effectively to do just that ever since it was created. Perhaps it is about time that you learned about your straw man and how you can stop it being used against you. Knowing about it is the most important first step. You need to go on a journey of discovery, and I'm afraid that what you are about to discover is not very pleasant. However, if you decide to act on what you learn, it could change your life for the better. If you think that you are in debt, then you can get out of it if you are willing to stand up for your rights and refuse to be swindled any longer. Interested? If so, then let's start at the beginning and find out where your straw man came from and why you should care about it. It all started when your parents had a happy event and you entered the world. You don't know exactly when that was because you were not aware of the days of the weeks, the months of the years, or even what year it was. Even after some months had gone by, you still were not aware of these things. But by the, that time, your straw man had already been created and it was being used to make some very unscrupulous people rich. None of this was your fault. It happened because your parents were fooled into thinking that you needed to register your birth and get a birth certificate for you. So they applied for a birth certificate, not understanding what would happen when they did. Well, then. What did happen? According to the local authority, one, they lost ownership of their baby, you. Two, they allowed a straw man to be created. This is not something which they can be blamed for, as nobody told them it w would or even could happen, nor did anyone tell your parents what a straw man is or how it could be used against their baby. In actual fact, the registration is a contract in which is in reality null and void because there was no full disclosure by the local authorities, nor was there intent to to contract on the part of your parents. The registering of a baby's birth passes ownership of the baby to the local authorities and that and that alone allows the local authorities to take the child away from the parent. If they ever want to do that, this applies until the child reaches the age of maturity set by the current legal status. Doing that is not lawful, but after the birth has been registered, it is legal. And there is a world of difference between those two terms. 
a difference which it is very important that you come to clear understanding. So what is a straw man? A straw man is a fictitious legal entity created with the with the hope that as the child grows up, he will be fooled into believing that he is actually the, the straw man, which he most definitely is not, and pay all sorts of imaginary costs and liabilities which get attached to the, the straw man by con artists. How is a straw man created? Well, the mechanism involves the unnecessary birth certificate which the parent imagine is about and belongs to their baby neither of which is actually true if the baby has been named james and the family name is martin then you would expect the birth certificate to have the name james martin printed on it if that is what is printed on it then all is well and it is a genuine birth certificate and nothing more however if any other name is there, then the document is not a birth certificate, but instead is a creation of a straw man masquerading as capital James, capital Martin. The alternative entries might be any of the following names, all capitalized James, all capitalized Martin, Mr. James Martin, Martin. Mr. James or anything else which is not exactly James Martin and nothing else. Why create a straw man? The answer is in order to charge the straw man imaginary costs and penalties and fool the human James Martin into paying those amounts. These, imag these imaginary charges include income tax, council tax, inherent tax, Capital gains tax, road tax, import tax, value added tax, fuel levy, loan interest, bank charges, and anything else that full time professionals can think of and are confident that you will not notice that you never agreed to pay and don't need to pay. Legal needs. Legal needs is a secret language invented to trick you. It uses English words but attaches secret meanings to those words, which with the sole intention of stopping you from believing that what they are saying to you has nothing to do with the normal meaning in the English language. Their purpose is to cheat you and rob you. For example, they will ask to you, do you understand? In English, that means, do you comprehend what I'm saying to you? And the automatic response would be yes, meaning I do comprehend what you are saying to me. But these sneaky underhanded people have changed the meaning in legal needs to mean do you stand under me meaning do you grant me authority over you so that you have to obey whatever i tell you to do what makes it even worse is the fact that they will never tell you that they have switched from english to legal needs and if that is not dishonest underhanded and unscrupulous then i don't know what is if you answer the question but believing that English is being spoken, then they then they pretend that you are contracting with them to become subordinate to them. Whenever or not that is actually true is debatable because that is effectively a verbal contract between you and them. And for any contract to be valid, there has to be full and open the disclosure of all of the terms of the contract and then unreserved acceptance by both parties and in these cases that has most definitely not occurred but what is the point in all this well this maneuver is intended to trick you into agreeing to represent your straw man why ah now that's a good question but to answer it takes a bit of explaining and you need to understand the overall situation. All humans are born equal with complete freedom of choice and actions. If you live in the same place as a lot of other people, then there are a few restrictions which have grown up by common consent over time. These restrictions are for your protection and the protection of the other people living near you. These restrictions are called the law or most accurately common law and they are few in number and very easy to understand 
They are, number one, you must not injure or kill anyone. Number two, you must not steal or or de damage things owned by somebody else. Number three, you must be honest in your dealings and not swindle another. These restrictions have resulted for resulted from hundreds of years of disputes which have been dealt with through using common sense and these opinions of ordinary people. They are the only limitations on you. And if you don't want to abide by them, then you need to go to some isolated place and stay away from other people. Many people think that there are hundreds of other laws which they have to keep and new ones every other day. But that is not so. Those are other things are called statues and keep and keeping them is optional for you, the human but they are not optional for the fictitious straw man and that is why the people who benefit from those things want to persuade you to represent your straw man and to become subject to all of their invented restrictions and charges if you knew that they were optional would you agree to number one give most of your earnings away in taxes and similar charges number two Pay to own a vehicle. Number three, pay to own a television set. Number four, pay to drive on roads which were built with your money. Number five, be forced to join the army service if you are told to. Number six, send any army which is supposed to represent you into another country to murder innocent people there. Were you ever told that these things are optional? If you agree to represent your straw man, then these things become binding on you. These are some of the statues which politicians keep inventing in order to make you, you poor, make them and their friends rich, and keep you in a position where you have to do everything they say, no matter how much that harms you and does away with your natural freedoms and rights. But say somebody, we elect a government to represent us, and so we have to do what they say. After all, they have our best interests at heart, don't they? Well, that is a nice thought, but is it actually true? No, it isn't. You think that you elect politicians to represent you in your good government, but that is not what you actually do. That is part of a very carefully fostered illusion intended to keep you in your place and given most of your earnings away, typically 80% of all you earn. Part of the secret is that what is supposed to be your government is actually a privately owned for-profit company. And all that you do when voting is to help choose the servant officers inside that company. It will never make the slightest difference to what happens in the future as the company's policies and actions are controlled by the owners of the company. And they are not influenced in any way whatsoever by what you do. Think this is far-fetched? Then check it out via Dunn and Borstein or any of the other place which records the setting up and performance of the 160 million commercial companies worldwide. When you do that, you will discover, for example, that the United States is a commercial for-profit uh, business. The United States Corporation is a private business. The non-federal Federal Reserve Bank is a private business set up in the year 1913 as it as is every court and every police force and every Congress is a business and not a person. Just in case you are not aware of it, the purpose of any commercial for-profit corporation is to make money for its owners and shareholders if there are any. The people who you think of as the government don't do anything that earns money. They instead take money from you. And, that, and their main job is to make sure that you don't realize that they are in the same position as IBM, which makes uh, which takes away millions of your money every year. So why all the presence of there being a genuine government which you elect and who serves you? 
They don't want you to understand that they are just running a company which produces nothing of any worth. Something like a betting shop where almost every customer loses money. And wake up to the fact that unlike what you have been told all your life, this is all optional and you don't need and you don't need to play the rip off games any longer unless you want to. They want you to be so burdened down with paying them money and working so hard and so long that you don't have the time, money or energy to stop and think about what is happening to you and your family. They are desperate to stop you from just walking away from their scam so they make every effort to connect you with the fictions which is your straw man because fictitious entities like commercial companies can't help have any dealing with a real man or a real woman they can only deal with another fiction like your straw man and it is essential that they fool you into believing that you have to act on behalf of your straw man which you don't they have a number of well-proven methods of distracting you and keeping you from finding out. They want you to see a great deal of entertainment. Not because there is anything wrong with entertainment, but while you are being entertained, you will not be asking awkward questions. Also, they are very careful that most entertainment reinforces their make-believe world and make it appear to be the real world, where everyone is under the government police officers uphold the laws taxes are essential in order to keep things going and things which are said to be for you are taxed heavy not to make money but supposedly to encourage you to avoid those things you will notice that they keep saying that their that their invented statues are the law which they most certainly are not but if they say it often enough People start believing it and never think to question what they say. They also have another very effective technique, and that is fear. They want you to be afraid, afraid of imaginary terrorists, afraid of disasters, afraid of new diseases, afraid of foreign countries, afraid of the economy doing badly and inflation rising. If you doubt this, then take a look at the news and count the number of positive uplifting news items and the number of negative or depressing news items it doesn't take much in the way of research to see that very heavy negative bias in the news the reason behind this is to make you feel that you need a government behind this um government and an army to protect you from these supposed dangers it is easy to keep the news items biased that way because all of the major news agencies and media outlets in the world are owned by only five to six privately owned commercial businesses so so to supposedly connect you to the straw man which they created for you which when your birth was registered they use the legalese technique of conning you and with the name of the, the the straw man if you are ill advised enough to go to a court which is a corporate place of business as the accused you will be asked to confirm your name quoting the name the full name shown on your birth certificate which is the legal personality titles such as mr dr reverend governor and senate or whatever are not asked for at as they are not Required. The accused is actually the legal personality, which is the name on the birth certificate. So when they ask for the person's name, they are talking to the legal personality, the, the straw man, and not to the human. This is because a human cannot exist in the legal world. Only pieces of paper can. And that is something which they are very careful not to tell you. This is a really key issue natural law and common law are the only laws which apply to humans and they deal only with harming other people or causing them loss and outside of those restrictions a human has free and unlimited entitlement to do anything he chooses which complies with these principles as opposite to this acts of congress statues and statutory instruments 
contracts do not apply to the, the, the human, but are only to the piece of paper, which is the legal personality, which has no reality. As the legal fiction, the legal personality was created by the company called the United States Corporation. That company gets to say what the rights and duties for that piece of paper are. When a person is born in America, the mother and father submits a birth certificate registration form, which is a piece of paper. There is no requirement under common law to do this. When any li limited company or corporation is set up, there is always a certificate of registration in order to create its legal personality. And that is a piece of paper. Please note that an American birth certificate states quite clearly that it is not evidence of identity, meaning that it has nothing to do with any human. Marked on it is U.S. copyright, showing clearly that it does not belong to an individual and was created by the state. This act of registering a child makes the child a ward of the court, and the child can be taken away from the parents at any time. The Leganese, the definition of words, which sounds commonplace, can be found in Black Law the Dictionary, and the current edition is the eighth. Interestingly, in Leganese, you, the human, are defined as a monster which shows exactly what the people who use Leganese think of you. Charming people, aren't they? Another trick they try to play on you is to imply that a summons is something which, must, which you must obey, while in fact it is only an invitation to attend their place of business. They are not inviting you, the man or woman, but instead they are inviting the legal personality to their place of business. And please note, that these that there is a choice as it is only an invitation the excuse me the legal personality is just a piece of paper a birth certificate created by the commercial company called the united states corporation and it is not the human you can't be forced into a contract so they have to de deceive you into entering into one without understanding what you are doing they are using deception as every judge's court is a trading name for the commercial company called the Department of Justice, which does not have a parent company listed, meaning that it is a parent company itself. Legal people on being on being showed this company registration responds by realizing that if this information is genuine, which it is, then the U.S. has been lawless for more than 100 years because the whole justice system is being dealt with by a commercial c c company. Going to court is in connection with any civil action is a very bad idea as the only function of a court is to judge between two parties who disagree and then penalize the loser. The court doesn't care who wins or loses, and the objective of the court is to make a profit for its owner as it is a commercial enterprise, and its purpose is to acquire m money from anybody who is foolish enough to, to attend. If you look at the summons, which is really an invitation to go to, to court, you will see that it is not in your name but in the name of the straw man, which they are hoping to fool you into representing. Dealing with debt. Because of the very high percentage of the money earned being taken away from the average person, it is not unusual for people to end up with what looks like debt. Most people spend their time worrying over the statement of what they are told they owe and do endless calculations to see if they agree with the numbers which they have been sent. Again, this is a sort of misdirection which magicians use to fool audiences, distracting their attention away from where the action is really taking place. Here, the question is really not how much is owed, but instead is, is anything actually owed? You need to remember that any financial institution is a legal fiction and does not actually exist. As a result of this, it can only deal with other legal fictions 
essentially other pieces of paper and it can't have any dealings with a man or a woman as they are not legal fictions it is also important to understand what passes for money nowadays let's say our trusty friend james martin goes looking for a loan and he fills out an application from form with the swindle bank inc for ten thousand dollars interestingly the form which he is asked to sign says that he has already received the ten thousand dollars although the loan has not yet been approved the next day the loan is approved and james is handed a check which he is asked to sign and deposit to his account with the bank he won't follow up on the very interesting procedure at this time but please remember that he has now provided two signatures for ten thousand dollars in the straw man's name and all he has received is a one and four zeros in the account of a swindled bank all goes well all goes well for several months until james loses his job and does not manage to get another one this is financial trouble which he does not know how to deal with time goes by and james has not has significant money to make payments against his loan from the Swindle Bank Inc. He starts getting letters from the bank saying that he must pay the errors immediately and keep up with the payment in, in future. There is not the slightest chance of that happening as James just does not have the money and he does not know what to do. Fortunately, Peter, the next door neighbor of James, happens to be an independent financial advisor for with years of experience and james has the idea of asking him for help peter is willing to help and so he sits down and goes through all of his paperwork then he tells james you must not ignore this situation write back immediately and say that you agree to pay any financial obligation which you might lawfully owe on the condition that they that they can provide one validation of the debt that is the actual accounting Two, verification of their claim against you that is a signed invoice three a copy of a contract binding both parties you and them in a letter by certified mail so that there is an independent witness to have to it having been delivered every letter you write should be marked clearly without prejudice which means that you reserve all your lawful rights and you accept no contract unless it is shown to be lawful by meeting the four essential conditions to a lawful binding contract namely one full disclosure you were not told that you were actually creating the credit with your wet ink signature two equal consideration they brought nothing of value to the table and so had nothing to lose three lawful terms and conditionings you were based on fraud yours was based on fraud number four the wet ink signature of both parties corporations can't sign because they have no rights or mind to contracts since they are soulless legal fictions and furthermore no third party can sign a contract on their behalf peter then tells james that agreeing to pay provided that evidence of a lawful debt can be produced stops him stops him being taken to court because courts only educate between parties who are in dispute and as James has are, has agreed to pay, there is no d dispute. So the court would not accept any application for a hearing. If the swindled bank were foolish enough to try, James has only to send the court a copy of his letter agreeing to pay, and the case would be thrown out, d dismissed immediately, and the bank might well be penalized for wasting the court's time. The bank is now in trouble as it has been running a con game on James and so can't produce the documents for which James has asked. The, the request by James was reasonable in every respect. However, a loan agreement is a contract and so that has to be filled full the disclosure of all the details. 
which there wasn't. Both sides have to put up something of equal worth, which didn't happen. And the contract has to be signed in wet ink by both parties, which the bank can't do. So the bank has a real problem. The bank will probably send a statement of what it wants James to believe is an outstanding amount. James should return this with a polite note saying that a statement is not an invoice. So would they please provide a signature assigned voice invoice as requested? They will also probably send a photo of his loan application form, at which point James should write back and point out politely that it does not constitute a contract as it is only signed by one of the parties himself and he has asked for a copy of the contract signed by both parties the bank is likely to go silent at this point and stop corresponding with james james should then write again requesting that the necessary documents be sent to him within the next 14 or perhaps 28 days and if that does not happen, then he will consider the debt to be fully discharged. The bank will either remain silent or write back to say that the debt is fully discharged. If the bank tries ponying, then just tell them politely that you only wish to deal with this matter in writing and hang up with phony. If the bank remains silent for that stated period of time, then James should write back stating that due to the bank's failure to provide the necessary documents of a lawful debt within the reasonable period of time, provided that James now considers that the debt is fully discharged and asks the bank to confirm that in writing. The bank will normally write back confirming that the debt is fully discharged and that there is nothing owing and if it does not and if it does not do that it will just stop asking for any further payments the reason for how and why this takes place take takes a good deal of explaining and many people find it difficult to understand so it is covered in detail on the following pages here many people think that the process sounds like you're ripping off the bank but this is definitely not the case what is money Originally, in England, the unit of money was called one pound sterling. That was because it was literally sterling silver weighing one pound. As it was quite difficult to carry several pounds weight of currency around with you, it was arranged that the actual silver could be held in a bank and a promissory note, which was essentially a receipt for the deposit of each pound of silver on deposit was issued. It was much easier to carry these banknotes around and to do business with them. If you wanted to, you could always take these notes to a bank and ask for them to be cashed. And the bank would hand you the equivalent weight of sterling silver in exchange for the notes. Today, the currency of America is banknotes, which are certainly easy, easier to carry around than metal coins. But there is one very important difference. These notes are issued by the private company called the Federal Reserve Bank, which is a good, which is as good a name for a company as any other name. However, if you were to take one of those bank notes to a branch of the company and ask for it to be cashed, all they would do is give you another note with the same number of credit printed on it or alternatively other notes with smaller numbers printed on them. This is because unlike the original banknotes, there is nothing of any physical value backing up the banknotes of to today. They are only materially worth the physical paper on which they are printed. And it actually gets worse than that. What happens most commonly nowadays is that they do not even bother printing those pieces of paper. Now, they just tap some numbers into a computer record or if they are old fashioned enough, they write the numbers into a ledger by hand. What do those numbers re represent? Nothing at all. They have no actual value. In other words, just as much value as if you type them into your own computer, quite meaningless. And yet a bank or other financial institution will 
merely lend you those numbers in return for years of your hard work plus interest charges now isn't that really generous of them actually th this is not at all funny because if you d d don't keep paying them money earned by your very real work they will attempt to take your house and possessions away from you this won't happen if you understand that what they lent you was actually valueless Take the case of Jerome Dedele of Minnesota in America. In court, Jerome challenged the right of the bank to foreclose to foreclose on his home, which had been purchased with a loan from the bank. Jerome argued that any mortgage contract required that both parties, that is himself and the bank, put up a legitimate form of property for the exchange. In legal language, that is called a legitimate consideration put forward by both parties to the, the contract jerome explained that the money was in fact not the property of the bank as it had been created out of nothing as soon as the loan agreement was signed that is the money does not come out of the bank's existing assets as the bank is simply inventing it and in reality the bank is putting up nothing of its own except for a fictitious liability on paper as the court case progressed, the president of the bank, Mr. Morgan, took the stand and admitted that the bank, in combination with the privately owned commercial company called the Federal Reserve Bank, created the entire amount of the loan in credit in its own books by means of a bookkeeping entry. The money and credit coming into existence when they created it. Further, Mr. Morgan admitted that no United States law or statute exists which gives him the right to do this. A lawful consideration must exist and must be tendered to support the loan agreement. The jury found that there had been no lawful consideration put forward by the bank. So the court rejected the bank's application for foreclosure and Jerome Daly kept his home debt free. That is exactly the situation with all American mortgages. When someone makes an application for a mortgage or any other loan, the applicant's signature is required on the application form before the loan is approved. The signature on that signed application makes it a viable piece of paper which the bank can deposit in its accounts as a credit to the bank for the amount of the loan. The bank could just keep the application form and stay ahead of $100,000 or whatever but they want more much more they want to they want the borrower to pay them the same amount again funding it by years of labor and not only the amount of the supposed loan but significant extra amount in interest as well why do you think that they are so keen to lend you money they are even willing to lend to people with very poor credit as there is no way that the bank can lose out on the deal no matter what happens this is why if a company starts demanding payments of large sums of money, you start by asking them to provide the accounting for the deal. In other words, you are asking them to show in writing that they provide something of genuine worth as their side of the loan contract, as they intend, as they invented the money as numbers in their books with no real worth attached to those numbers. They are in deep trouble as they can't comply with your demands to see their accounting for the deal. Did you ever wonder how the average bank manages to keep hundreds of millions of dollars profit every year? Well, you are looking right at where a large chunk of that comes from.